Hello, Mr. Cervantes. My name is Jennifer DeGraff, and I'm the principal here at Canyon Hills, and I have... Hello, I'm Ileana Mendez. I'm one of the assistant principals. Hi. We both had the opportunity to talk to you, sir, a couple of weeks ago when we had our conference call, uh, not just with myself and Ms. Mendez, but also with our district support. Um, and let me start by just apologizing. It has taken us uh, a little bit longer. As you know, um, the running of our campus is just on a day-to-day -day basis. It's really important that we focus on instruction. And so um, because we were right before spring break, we wanted to take the opportunity to clear our own minds and make sure that you have the up updates that you did request. So uh, the following slides will be updates to um, where we're at, where we're moving, and we just want to thank you in advance. Hi. Have a great one. <laughs> I would like to take a moment, Mr. Cervantes, to just show you the area in which we have much of our digital documentation. We do use Office 365 as a district and in our OneDrive folder. There are two different folders that are dedicated to Canyon Hills. One is considered Canyon Hills Administration, and in that Canyon Hills Administration folder, you will notice that we have several different folders as it pertains to how we run our campus throughout the year. The one I thought I would show you more specifically would be, of course, for the improvement required documentations. And when you notice, if you would notice, over here we have TEA, Improvement Required Folder. When we do open up that folder, it does have documentation of several different PLCs that we have held, as well as different faculty meetings, as we are in a continuous state of improvement. Specifically, I wanted to show you one of the documents that I will be attaching to this email in addition to this particular slideshow. When I look at the different areas that are in here, Again, there are several. I'm going to go ahead and focus in on the most recent one that we worked on when we had our conference a couple of weeks ago. When you do take a look at that, if you notice right here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the notes page that we have been using to make sure that we are following through with everything we say we're gonna follow through with. So when I open this one up, it is attached to this email, so you will be able to open it as well and take a look at where we are. Over here in this area, you will notice that we've got our target element one, target element two, and target element three, along with just an overview of where we stand and why we ended up with improvement required this year. As it pertains to the first nine weeks, our semester assessment, as well as some mock scores that have recently come in, we do keep track of our data. We take a look at not only where it holds us right now, but also on the new accountability system. We are aware of all of the progress measures that we must meet in order to meet the new accountability system. As you can see here, it does state that it's for the new accountability, which of course has to do with meeting the expectation, mastering the expectation, and approaching the grade level. With that said, we also have different things that we have strategies for as it pertains to target element one, two, and three. I know that in your spare time that you will be taking a look at what is happening here on our campus. And if you do, of course, have any questions as to what you're seeing on your end, please feel free to let us know. When you go back to the area, as I had mentioned before, we do end up with several different folders because we are a digital campus. We will go back to Canyon Hills Middle School because that was administration only. And when you go into Canyon Hills Middle School, once again, you will be able to find several different digital copies of the different things we have going on. Let's go ahead and take a look for the purpose of this particular tutorial to response to intervention. We do have several different items in here as it pertains to just tracking our students, not just our LEP students and our SPED students, but also all students. So when I do look at, of course, we have our RTI folders, but let's take a look at what's actually happening currently right now, uh, almost literally as we speak. If you notice here, we do have different protocols and what is the purpose of the planner. So in addition to that, you will take a look at the different protocols as well as who our team leaders are, when is our PLC time being dedicated to really have a joint effort between our tech calendar, our called Cobra Tech, it is a new tech school, as well as our main campus. We have already begun our Saturday school for ELAR and math. That has been going very successful. We are averaging 130 students per Saturday. In addition, we do have after-school tutoring that is offered to our students in different areas. 
We also, of course, are focusing in on the SEs. When it comes to the semester exam, we did take a hard look at our data and our teachers just attended the district sponsored response to intervention data sessions and that took place just yesterday and the day before. With all that said, we do have different data here as it relates to how the students did and what the teachers need to focus on as we make our way closer and closer to STAR. This document is also being attached to the email so that you may take a closer look and also so that you may copy and paste any information that you deem necessary. Again, sir, if you do have any questions at all, please do feel free to let us know. And in case you have been watching as I'm scrolling, it includes science and social studies as well. All of those RTI plans are currently in place and teachers are definitely in a state of it is crunch time. We call it crunch time because we know how close our star is. Going back to our files, I'm going to go again into Canyon Hills Middle School. Again, to show you how our entire campus is really arranged. When I take a look at different things that are here on our particular campus folder. We do have several different folders and if you would like any more information as it pertains to any of them here, please sir feel free to let us know. That is it for the Office 365 tutorial and I will be going next to Schoology. For this slide, I would like to just show you yet another digital component of our campus. On our campus, we do have different digital components, but we are 95% of the time digital. It being 21st century education, we definitely are in the process and have been actually for the last two years, teaching our, not only our teachers, but also our students on how we are working with our technology components to really improve instruction. With that in mind, this is our Schoology home course. In Schoology, we find all kinds of different things that are available to our teachers, but the one I wanted to focus in on and show you today has to do with the way that administration is making sure the students are receiving quality instruction every single day. As we all know, a part of that has to do with T-Tests. And so in our T-Test folder, you will be able to find several different things that teachers were previously trained on and that we visit on a regular basis. This first area has several different T-Test resources, as well as our rubrics, our focus calendar for instructional feedback, and several other items. One of the ones I wanted to focus in on with you today, sir, is to take a look at the way that we make sure that our teachers are improving instruction daily. One of the ways we do that is what we consider learning resources, and here in our district we have what's called Who Knew It? Every time we conduct a walkthrough or a T-test appraisal, some of those times we notice that a particular teacher is having trouble with one domain and dimension or another. So in addition to having the area of reinforcement, not just during T-test appraisals, but also during all of our instructional walkthroughs, we also have areas of re refinement and reinforcement during walkthroughs. If, for example, we will go to instruction for the purpose of this tutorial, and in instruction, as you know, we've got 2.1 all the way to 2.5. Let's say that during an instructional walkthrough, one of the administrators notices that the student, is, that the teacher is having difficulty with dimension 2.4 differentiation. Let's say that they are not imp implementing something such as cooperative learning. With that said, what we do is we will assign the cooperative learning tutorial, which does require those teachers to log in. At this moment, I'm going to log into my account so that you're able to see what it might look like for a teacher. Once the teacher logs in, she will be able to see what was quote unquote assigned to her. In this particular case, we will come in here. We will find the area in which we need to assign a particular Who Knew It tutorial, and the teacher will have the opportunity to take care of that tutorial and submit. When I come back to Schoology, I'm going to click on that cooperative learning again, and now that I'm logged in, it'll take me exactly to the cooperative learning tutorial that we want the teacher to go through. As you can see up here, they start by learning it. Then they go to making sure that they actually do it. Then they share it and then they prove it. 
When we do follow up with instructional walkthroughs, we do want to make sure that after a teacher has been assigned that particular tutorial, that they are implementing it inside the classroom. We're able to track all of that via the Who Knew It device, and it is very helpful for teachers to also do self-directed learning when, in that particular case, teachers are able to really complete any of the particular tutorials that are offered in several different dimensions. I know that some of us, for the most part, we want other instructional feedback to tell us what we should be doing. However, we want our teachers to also have the ability to do what they want. Under, if you notice here, we're in the learning environment, and let's say that we had a teacher that was really interested in doing things such as 21st century skills. This being a completely digital campus, that teacher can literally just click on that particular strategy, again, going through the same process, really of making sure that they are responsible for their own learning. Back into our Schoology website, you will also notice that we do have several different areas that have been previously discussed with our departments as well as our teachers. In each of these different areas, it is just yet another way for all of us to work as a team to make sure that we are implementing strategies campus-wide. If you have additional questions or wish to find out more information in this particular area, sir, please feel free to give me a call. As part of our conversation during the day of the conference call, one of the things that we did um, talk about and was a question in your email had to do with campus highlights. This particular slide is talking about the climate, culture, and communication here in our campus. And so with that said, I did bring you to where we have on a weekly basis, we do provide campus-wide updates. And we also ask teachers to really focus in on something in particular for that given week. So what you're looking at right now, sir, I'm not going to show them all to you because as you can see, they're approximately uh, between 15 and 20 minutes per week as we do update um, all of our campus. And so I'm going to hone in um, on a couple just so you can take a look and see what that looks like. Welcome to Friday. Um, it is literally 12.40 p.m. on Friday. Um, I've lost track of the date. And so even if you um, did not need to attend uh, the Staff Development Day because you went to Engage to Learn, just remember that you are always welcome. Um, so that's a, a very special shout out. Um, I do want to say um, thank you to all of the teachers who have been openly communicating and sending emails to the admin team to get some support and assistance with specific So that is one example of our weekly updates. Um, that was actually uh, given just a few weeks ago. Here's another. Good morning, Cobra Kingdom. Uh, it is Monday. Questions about your new passes, please let us know. And otherwise, we look forward to seeing those passes around the students next. Also want to make sure that our elective teachers, who are also very important for our students as we count down to um, STAR, please make sure that our elective teachers are attending the Reading Strategies trainings every Wednesday in the library, beginning this Wednesday. What AVID start stands for Advancing Via Individual Determination. One of the big goals that we talk about with our students and our core values is how the choices that they make are going to determine their future. Their future. So the reason that I included this summer in depth is implementing them inside your classroom. If you notice, when I first started here, we had approximately 64, and I say approximately, our grade level meetings that were held a couple of weeks ago. As part of those meetings, you guys did come up with the list of A, students who will be recognized during our Cobra Kingdom meets this Wednesday, but also students that needed to be placed on behavior trackers. So the reason I wanted to share this particular area with you, sir, is that with um, it being again crunch time, we spoke about that earlier in this particular slide, and we want our teachers and our staff as well to just be um, all on the same page as we do know uh, we need to prioritize what's important here on our campus. And so with that said, I did just want to show you the highlights that we do include um, on a weekly basis, uh, and those can also be shared with you if you are a little bit more curious about how that is going down and, um, and how it is building really just the culture of accountability and making sure that everybody stays on the same page.